moving on in and talking about integrity another issue that kind of really kind of cut home and really hurt me um a video came out a couple of weeks ago of uh dame dash formerly of rockefeller records and somebody that was instrumental in the i have no beef kind with of you know building hip-hop up to what it is now at the moment you know he was behind jay-z behind kanye west behind loads of other different people and um it, throughout the last few years he's kind of gone through a little bit of a roller coaster where he's kind of had to separate himself or kind of you know I don't know, we've got ousted from Rockefeller Records and he's had to kind of build his career or his kind of businesses up from the ground up without any kind of, it seems like seemingly any kind of support from the hip-hop community. He kind of got excommunicated, maybe um, he kind of rubbed up people the wrong way for his tenure at Rockefeller Records, but regardless of what it was, it seemed like people picked their sides, people chose Jay-Z over Dame Dash and he's kind of been left to kind of rebuild his career on his own. He's done a really good job here at the moment. He's kind of launched loads of little companies on the side. He's got his clothing brand, he's got his streaming platform, he directs films. Um, he's got an art gallery he does loads of different things that he's done over the years that's kind of allowed him to kind of maintain his uh level of lifestyle right which is again it's not a mean feat to do um but then it seems like in the last few and then it kind of culminated with the publishing of a book called culture vultures which i've got on my spotify which i bought as an audio book and it's available on physical copy as well it's an amazing book it kind of details his kind of you know um journey throughout the hip-hop world his business world his business um pov his mindset what he thinks about things and essentially introduces culture vulture into the uh cultural vernacular right and he kind of labels cultural vultures as people who are you know essentially coming in and taking from the culture without giving anything back and doing it all for their own personal gain and one person he cites as being the main culture vulture is like leo Cohen type right um a, a record executive who a lot of people have derided over the years a person that was credited for inventing the 300 the 360 deal which is a deal that involves a record label taking 100 percent of the revenue of everything an artist no sorry taking a bit of the rep taking a bit of everything the artist makes from touring to merch to appearances whatever they do the art the record label can take everything of it right and the whole idea behind i think the benefit I think Leo Cohen would argue that the benefit of a 360 deal is that you get more upfront money. So you get more of an advance at the beginning to kind of start making your first album. And obviously, you know, that's like a golden handshake because you might get given a million pound up front. But if they're taking a bit of everything that you make after that and you have to pay back the million, you're probably in debt before you even spent a penny. So essentially, you know, someone that everyone kind of labels that and he kind of labeled it at Steve Stout too. Somebody, again, who's not got the best reputation amongst people in hip hop. So essentially, he's kind of played the kind of the ant the villain role in hip-hop right he calls out people he calls out their bluff he's kind of gone through a bit of drama with his directing as well so it's also been a bit of a roller coaster for him but it seemed like he was able it seemed like he was able to stand on his integrity and kind of go from there right and just you know say look i'm doing this in order to kind of you know for the benefit of everyone else coming behind me and for benefit of people that are in hip-hop now i don't want anyone else to get um suckered or to get scammed or whatever hoodwink like i did but then it seemed to take a turn when he went on Nick Cannon's show. And I don't know why it happened, but I think in the light of this R. Kelly documentary, because it spoke about R. Kelly's relationship with Aaliyah, who Dame Dash was um, with before she passed away. And maybe that kind of brought up some old feelings that he had previously for somebody that meant a lot to him who passed away in a really tragic way. And, you know, seeing somebody like R. Kelly, a monster who kind of, you know, played a big part in her no we could not play a big part but was a, a reason why she might have been upset during that time and along da, 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 da. so maybe it drummed up some really bad feelings for him but it seemed like he kind of took a bit of a turn and started to say things that were a bit uncharacteristic of dame dash and he went on nick cannon's show and he kind of insinuated that jay-z might have uh uh jay-z might have been trying to get a leah he also insinuated that maybe jay-z was allegedly dating another hip-hop artist um when they were underage really some dicey dicey shit that was a bit like whoa it took you aback right because you never really hear them just talk like that about jay-z if anything the jay-z beef that we heard him talk about was that he felt as if um jay-z was being um led astray by other people he felt as if jay-z let them business people get involved in between their relationship and that's why it kind of crumbled he felt as if like he was left out trying to dry but it never it never kind of got that personal it never kind of got that dice either and it's so you know those are heavy allegations to kind of level at somebody so it kind of felt a bit weird when that happened and i was a bit like whoa that's a bit strange and if you know it kind of went on normally no it's normally said that much more about it jay-z obviously on his side didn't say anything publicly about it because it's not nothing you'd want to really address and it kind of felt like it went away. And then out of nowhere, we get this video a few weeks later, a really strange video of Dame Dash sitting in a dimly lit studio surrounded by his 
uh, filming crew effectively apologizing to Jay Z for what he done, apologizing to Jim Jones, another person he kind of fell out with during that time. But then the worst thing is that he's apologizing to Leo Cohen and Steve Stout, and Leo Cohen is not someone to apologize to, especially if you've read recent reports from Lupe Fiasco who tweeted recently that um, he remembers asking Leo Cohen for his masters back in the day when he was kind of signed, I think in the beginning and um, uh, sarcastically Leo Cohen said to Lupe Fiasco, oh, what um, do you want him in a suitcase or something so you can take him home with you or something along those kind of lines like like as if like you're never going to get your masters sort of thing and now, you know, Leo Cohen is doing the same sort of bullshit at, at YouTube now, that's where he's headed up but anyway, I'll play, I'll play the clip but it was really, it, it was distressing for me being a big fan of Dame Dash and really admiring um, the stance that he took because I know having kind of gone through the thing, he's kind of gone through a little bit on my little scale how difficult it is to have that kind of level of integrity and feel like you're out of the conversation and feel like no one's inviting you to the party. And it seemed like a lot of people on social are saying that this came because um, rec- no, a-, a few weeks or a couple of days ago, um, Jay-Z or Rock Nation had their annual Rock Nation brunch, which they have prior to go prior to the Grammys. And the whole idea behind it is like, you know, everyone that's not going to the Grammys can have this way to celebrate themselves, celebrate music, inspire each other. Um, and it seems like a celebration of black excellence that PDD always talks about. And a lot of people in the hip hop space get a lot of FOMO when they see the pictures, right? Because, you know, essentially being invited there is an acknowledgement that you are part of the hip hop glitterati, that you are the, you know, one of the mainstays, somebody of, if some of the people should give a shit about, everyone wants to kind of be there. And it kind of seemed like Dame Dash got a bit of FOMO because of the Rock Nation brunch and, you know, the fact that he's kind of going through what he's going through with the directing thing. And, you know, he kind of feels like he's out of the conversation. It kind of brought home those feelings again that his friends don't want him around anymore. And this is the explanation for this video. But let's kind of, Quickly play and we can go back to it. I have no beef with anybody. Pause. I'm looking past it. So Jay-Z, if I've offended you, I apologize. Leo Cohen, if I offended you, I apologize. Steve Stout, if I've offended you, I apologize. Just because you don't have the same morals and principles, it's cool. I'm not angry no more. You know, I called Jim Jones today and I was like, I miss him. I don't know y'all know it, but I miss him. As a brother, I love his family. I want, I want, I want to be happy. And Jay, you know, the friendship we had was cool, man. I just miss it. But whatever he doing, he doing. But I'm cool with it, bro. I'm sorry, man. I, I wasn't myself for a second. Ali had me fucked up. And Biggs, I'm sorry, bro. If I offended you. Whatever you're doing, I'm with it. I love you, man. And I know you're mad at me, but whatever. I'm sorry. I can admit it. You know, when I make some money, I'll send you something. It's because you're my... So, there's nothing really wrong with what you said, right? For the most part. I think anyone would kind of understand and agree um, or has sympathy with being in that position because, you know, that, that's the thing that no one really talks about when it comes to integrity, when it comes to standing your ground, when it comes to having a moral compass is the cons of it right the negatives of it is that you are all you're never going to be invited you're never going to be invited or welcome to the popular events or functions right you're never going to feel like you're welcome or people want you to be there because effectively you represent um people losing money no one wants to be associated with you because you're calling out the fakes and usually the fakes or the people that are hoodwinking people in the industry are the ones that are um, like it or not the decision makers so the cost of integrity the cost of standing your ground the cost of having a moral compass is that you're probably not going to be the person you're not going to be the person that everyone wants to invite to the functions and to the parties and that's a real big cost that you're having to pay because it means that you might lose some friends that you've known for years because they're going to be more worried about securing the safety of their family securing their own career uh prospects whatever it may be right no one's going to want to associate with you in fear that it's going to damage any kind of other possibilities that they have coming up and i know dame dash mentioned it a few times mentioned how he gets upset when kevin hart doesn't retweet about his movie or that sort of things happen but i think for the most part those things mostly happen because the powers that be that are paying kevin hart or that giving him the ability to kind of make movies or give the ability to tour around the world are saying that if you do this you're going to make other people in this organization upset and that's going to impact your pocket too so it's, there's a direct monetary uh loss that they're going to feel you as an individual being the moral the moral soldier and the integrity 
investigator, you don't mind, right? It's fine. You, you, for me, I wouldn't care if I lost an opportunity because I'm going to stand my ground. But I don't think my friends or people that I know would be comfortable losing money over something they didn't really 100% believe in or even understand. Because sometimes these moralistic arguments or arguments about integrity are two-sided, as we've seen with the Monique and Steve Harvey thing. There are two sides to every argument. There might be a legit reason why Leo Cohen feels as if he can swindle or he can um, purposely uh, misinform artists about their deals. There might be a, a real reason for it. It might call for it, right? There's a there's an idea that most promoters, especially in martial arts, especially in combat sports, are scumbags. Why? Because usually that kind of environment calls for somebody with no scruples to operate it. Maybe you can't be a good guy and run the UFC because Dana's a bit of a, you know, he's a bit of a dickhead, but maybe you can't be. Maybe Dana would argue you cannot be a good guy and run the UFC. Maybe you have to be a Dana White to run such a company with such personalities in there, with kind of trained fighters who could take your head off at any moment. You probably have to have that attitude in order to kind of run, kind of keep them in line, right? Maybe that is that could be argued. So there are two sides to every story. And I think sometimes when you're the moral police, there is a tendency or there is a feeling that you want to feel like people should do the same thing that you should do. But I think with age and with maturity, what you slowly realize is that everyone has their own interests at heart and not everyone wants to join in with your battle or fight. And it's not and it's not it's not something that you should be beating them over your head with, and it's not something that should make them less of a person or less of a man than you. Just because they've chosen to do go about things their own way. Because we're all doing again, we're all doing everything that everyone's doing is eventually feeding back into the same um, united goal. And the goal is to kind of, you know, bring back the power, bring back the influence, bring back the money. Um, all that sort of thing inside the black community that's essentially what those guys want to do and they all play their part dame dash having his own um, network platform or streaming platform that's playing one part um kevin hart doing stuff with loads of other companies and doing partnerships with all, all these other people that's playing his part jay-z doing his stuff underneath different labels and going into different businesses they're playing his part everyone's playing their part in this in this kind of ongoing battle that everyone's doing in order to kind of get the kind of influence back into side the black community and in general it doesn't necessarily call for everyone being a rebel it calls for one or two people being rebels that's the part they play and other people can play the part of playing the game it's all good but i guess for fans of dame dash and fans of hip-hop motivation all those kind of things it's quite you know distressing or sad to see somebody like a Dame Dash finally get grounded down by the system and he's apologizing to a Leo Cohen. I think the Jim Jones and Jay-Z apologies are probably warranted and probably fair because those are actually his friends and he kind of maybe feels like he went a bit hard in the paint at them. But Leo Cohen and Steve Stout, two businessmen that from until now, it felt like they didn't have any influence. They couldn't impact his pocket, but it maybe feels like now after the Nick Cannon interview, Nick Cannon's a really big platform as opposed to any other interview he might have done in the past. And the fact that he mentioned some really dicey shit in the Nick Cannon interview, maybe he's finally feeling the effects on it and it's starting to impact um, his family's safety because he mentions it a lot that he does everything for his last name, right? Um, so maybe he's starting to see that. I don't know. I can't really hypothesize about it because I don't have the information, but um, Dame Dash has finally apologized to Jay-Z and Jim Jones, which is fine, but the Leo Cohen and Steve Stout one kind of took me aback um, being a big fan of him but again maybe there's more to it maybe he's going to say that you know again um his family future has been uh called into jeopardy and he kind of fears for them because people are taking money off the table but again i just think there is a price to pay um with taking the stance that he's taken and i think by and large it's kind of not affected him so far he's kind of been able to kind of ride his own wave and kind of do his own thing but maybe now it's starting to finally catch up with him and he's starting to see that maybe just maybe the way you went about it wasn't the best way. We don't know. I don't know. But um, let's see how it kind of rolls on throughout the next couple of months. But yeah.